The difference right. between confidence and arrogance is results. So you take a look. Michael Jordan. If I walk up to a basketball court, I'm talking all this shit. Great example. Dylan Brooks is a great example. Yeah. Like we're going to yeah. get NBA here. Dylan Brooks, he's talking all this shit. Mm -hmm. Plays like trash. People make fun of him. He's a joke now. It's, it's almost like arrogant. It's a joke. Michael Jordan could say everything, the same exact things Dylan Brooks said, but because he's Michael Jordan, people are like, oh, yeah, he, they, they fear him. Yeah, and the, the context of it all, because with Dylan Brooks to the average person, oh, my God, he could destroy anybody. Yeah. But Dylan Brooks amongst his peers, oh, no, you're, you're just an ordinary, regular person. So it's, it's funny how context plays such a large role, because you'll be sitting there and you'll look at somebody like, well, you know, you may talk this particular way, but you don't have this verifiable evidence in your craft exactly. to be able to back that up exactly so, so if i if so to bring this back around if i was a large individual i was i was ra rather elephantine elephantine uh, um i i would not be able to walk around with the same confidence i'd be losing my mind yeah i'd be losing my mind so that's 100 percent what it is so i think for me i'm very self-aware if i ever saw myself getting out of shape and doing that stuff and also like i think that confidence prevents you from being scared like i always get these messages like aren't you scared she's using you for you for money she's gonna leave you blah 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 people always say that like aren't you scared of this i have no fear because i know who i am mm -hmm. it would be dumb for her to ever leave me because like w what i like it sounds weird but like you like i i have enough to to get attention from anywhere right you know in the same way that People, I think people being scared, it's, it's their insecurities comes from the fact that they don't know what they have to offer. Yes. And I think so, that's the, that's the biggest, well, you know, we, we fix it to get deep here. That's yeah. the biggest um, thing because I understand why one would have that fear of man, you know, uh, they could take everything. Like you could have a Tyrese situation yeah. to where you just wake up one night and then shorty gone yeah. and talk about, well, I want to move on. And you've been influenced by your friends. But if you know, you are the best possible option that this person has and moreover you take care of everything more often than not you won't find yourself in a position like that that's like a i think that's an anomaly although mm -hmm. it's it the, the the rates are so high amongst divorce and everything of that nature but there's usually times at which things can lead to yeah. that particular point but more often than not if you know you're that dude you know that you're taking care of everything that you have to take care of and moreover you can recover if it happens because of course you'll be devastated right it will sh it'll absolutely suck but you know who you are all right well you know here's a severance package you you wanted to you know put on a facade of why you were really here mm -hmm. and then you ultimately ended up playing me all right it hurts but i'll always bounce back yeah so yeah. as long as you have that kind of personality you'll always win in the end it may suck when you go through it because i can't tell you how many 100%. people I've, I, I've seen who've reached out to me whether it's been amongst my fallen who's gone through some terrible fucking divorces mm -hmm. with some people who just took them for everything that they had yeah. but they have in their mind like you know what it sucked while I was going through it, but I'm still alive. I still have an opportunity. I can bounce back from this. And they'll get the last laugh because that person whose heart isn't genuine, they came in with ul ulterior motives, then fuck them. At the end of it, they're not going to be able to sustain where they're at because they just lived their entire life being leeches and vultures. 100%. So that's the way I see it. It's like if you're not, if you're very secure and comfortable with yourself, and mm -hmm. that security comes from results, like I said, I'm rich, I'm in good shape. Um, I know kind of where I stand in the in the totem pole of society, right? Because there's I saw a study. It's like uh, the percentage of men that have a six pack and make over seventy thousand dollars a year is one point five percent. Really? How the hell did? See, I love these statistics. So now, now imagine like what percentage of men have a six pack and make over five hundred thousand dollars a year, half a million dollars a year? Mm -hmm. None. And I love how the six pack has made its way in there. And then, and then no, because that's kind of what. what yeah. Yeah, because that, that, when I was a kid, that was one of the things that I would always use as like the barometer of, all right, well, then how many people have a six pack? Like I was in junior high, high school, although in the grand scheme of things, people would say it doesn't really matter until you realize how bad people's health are mm -hmm. as they continue. So not only do you have financial, you know, gain, is your physical in the right position? Because although you don't need a, fist, a six pack to be healthy, but it's verifiable evidence that this motherfucker is grinding. Yeah, you, sure. you could say, oh, well, you know, this person genetics keep them in shit show me a 250 pound person who doesn't go to the gym eats well, like a motherfucker who walking yeah. around with six pack it, it's just not it sustainable it's like, like a six pack it's like yes genetics could help in the same way that right. oh uh, family money could help someone become rich right but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter if someone really works hard it might be mm -hmm. easier for some others 
might be easier for others, but for the most part, six pack is a verifiable way that this yeah. motherfucker gets yeah. that work. Yeah, the exception Saudi doesn't the beat gym. the rule. The and moment that yeah. you see it, you know it's it's verifiable, yeah, right? And I'm not talking about scrawny. If they have a six pack and they're under 130 pounds, yeah, mm. yeah, it, but, but it, like, it comes it comes uh, pre-installed. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But like, if they have a six pack and you can snap their arms, it doesn't count. Mm -hmm. But six pack is super verifiable, and again. Money's verifiable. There's a, something that I saw, a female delusion calculator. Oh, I've seen a lot of those clips. It might have been from a, um, Fresh and Fit. Female Fresh and Fit. delusion calculator. With the cat and, bags. <laughs> uh, but this is, and it's fucked up, but it is a little bit true because I think it gives you a good idea of like self-awareness and, and where you're at. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, motherfucker, did it disappear? Oh, you had it already um, on the tab? No, no, no. Uh, I don't know if that was, if the female delusion calculator was actually the name or if the website got sold or something, but mm. yeah, if you go. Google female delusion calculator, I got standardsbro.com, and literally you could pick like the age, mm -hmm. the the race, the minimum height, the minimum income, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I think that's a great way of like building your confidence. Because here's the thing: if you're not in the top ten percent, you got some work to do. Yep. But it's good because you at least you know where you're at. You're like, right. you know what? All right, I got some work to do. I maybe shouldn't be this confident yet. It, like this insecurity I'm feeling, maybe it's founded in actual reason, right? But if you're in the top 1% of anything, why would you be insecure about anything? Why would I be insecure about any woman ever leaving me? Mm -hmm. I could sleep peacefully at night knowing that like my wife will never leave me, that women will always want me because I'm in the top 1% of, if I put statistics in America, in the world, because America is essentially the world. So it's like that gives me peace at night because I'm like, listen, you're not going to find nobody like me. Right. So I think that's what that's how guys should look at it. Because here's the thing: I think a lot of people look at like personality, like, but my personality. Every motherfucker got a personality, yeah. bro. Everybody does. Somebody could be lame to one, but you could be amazing that's to another. You just gotta go and yeah. unlock. Personality it, is the prerequisite. That's the right. one you don't have to work for. Right. You can kind of work for it by like getting experiences and like becoming cultured, becoming funny, but it's the easiest one to have. You gotta have the other two. It's like almost a prerequisite if you want to be. Someone that feels feels secure in your relationship, right? And you you become desired. I think that can get you the leverage that. And you it makes need. you feel yeah, and also it makes you feel good. I can't tell you like how much being desired does for your confidence. Oh, like yeah. me me being able to say stupid shit and make a fool of myself comes from the fact that like I don't really care. It doesn't matter what I do. I know where I, I stand. You know. Yeah, you have to earn that right because yeah. if, you, if you're in a position where you know you're 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 kind of trying to make ends meet and everything of that nature and you try to be kind of aloof it doesn't work as well yeah because it's like okay this is why you're broke type right of right right it gives you that leverage so you could at least move through life and navigate through life the way you want to. well it's like one of those things where you know how people say when a girl asks you a question de depending on you could say the same thing but depending on how much money you have it it uh calculates different in their head so if a girl says like oh what do you do and you say something along the lines of like, oh, I'm a G. I, like, I'm a G, I'm a boss, mm -hmm. right? And you're broke? They're kind of like, but you're, you drive a Honda Civic, what do you mean? Mm. Right? I'm not saying that's Ooh, the barometer. Straight the Honda yeah, Civic. it's like weird. But it's like, if you're like, I'm a boss, and you're, and you're rich and you have this expensive restaurant, she's like, oh my God, you're so dumb. Like, what do you actually do? What, like, tell me, right? There's, there's almost like mysteriousness to it. And like, okay, he's just lying. Because I'll always downplay, what do you do? I'm like, I don't know, I just do some internet stuff. Mm -hmm. If you say it when you're broke, oh, I, I do some internet stuff. She's like, what do you do? But if you're rich, it's like, oh, the mystique is there. You know, so I think depending on like what you have, it, there's no like script to what to tell women. I hate these pickup artists because they're like, you should tell women this. But it's like, bro, just get rich. Because then no matter what you say, 